You may have noticed that if you place a hot body and a cold body together, the hot body tends to get colder, whereas the cold body tends to get hotter. That is, heat seems to be moving between the hot body and the cold body. We call this heat transfer. And what we will study today is ways in which heat can move from one place to another. And as you'll see, there's several ways, and the first one we will focus on is called conduction. So the first thing that you notice is that heat never, ever, ever seems to flow from cold to hot. That is, this never happens. Ever. And that makes sense, right? Because in a very, very, very cold day, the best way of heating yourself up is not to put yourself in the fridge, but, you know, to have a hot shower, for example. So it seems to be a law of nature that heat always flows from hot to cold bodies. Now the reasons for this are a little bit complicated and are related to something called entropy. But the basic idea is that energy doesn't like to be concentrated, but likes to spread out. That is, if you have a body that has a really, really high content of energy and a body that has a really, really low content, energy will tend to flow from one to the other until the energy content has evened out. Now, I'd like you to watch this video and try to figure out what happens and why. Now, as you can see, there's several balls of wax stuck to this spoon over there. Then, as the spoon gets heated by the candle, they start to fall down. And what happens is that the balls that are closer to the candle seem to fall before the balls that are farther away from the candle. And what I want you to think about is, why is this happening? Why do the balls that are further away fall after the ones that are closer to the candle? What you just saw is an example of heat conduction, which means that heat is transferred by contact. And what do we mean by that? Well, if you remember maybe from chemistry class, in a solid, atoms are linked together by little chains we call bonds. Now, if I start moving one of these atoms, the little chain will transmit this movement to the following atom, and that will keep being transmitted to this next one, and the next one, and the next one, until it has reached the last of the atoms. Since, as you probably recall from the last lesson, heat is nothing but movement, this means that heat will slowly move from the beginning of the chain to the end, until the whole solid has been heated up. Now, not all materials conduct heat equally well. So metals, for example, are very, very good conductors of heat. And this is very easy to check. All you need to do is stir your coffee and then look at your spoon and you see how it got hot really, really, really fast. Right? That's why we make uh, pants with metal. Now, on the other hand, wood and plastic, for example, are not very good conductors of heat. That's why we make wooden spoons to stir the soup or maybe to stir our food while we're cooking it. This way we can still stir our food without getting burnt. So what is it that makes metals conduct heat so well? Well, the answer lies in their atomic structure. Now, if you remember from your chemistry class, atoms are made of these tiny little guys in the middle called the nucleus that are positively charged and then these other guys with a negative charge called electrons that are floating around the nucleus. Now, in most materials, these electrons are stuck with their atoms. They can't move around. But in metals, electrons are actually shared by all the atoms and they can all freely move around the whole metal. Now, this makes it very, very easy for movement to get spread out because if I, for example, uh, shake up one of the electrons in here, because this electron can freely slide around the whole material, the movement will be communicated to any other electron, no matter how far they are. Which means that movement, and therefore heat, gets transferred very, very fast, at least compared to other materials, in metals. Alright guys, so with everything that you've learned so far, you should be able to answer this question over here, which is, why do frying pans have a plastic handle? Now, as you can see, most frying pans are made of metal, but the handle is made of plastic. So what I want you to do is to think about it, and then post a reply 
to this question in the comment section. Now remember, this is not optional. This is your homework. This is how I will know that you've watched the videos and that you're ready to move on in class. So please leave your answer in the comment section. Make sure that you leave your name so that I know it's you. And we'll discuss your answers in class.